a very good afternoon to everyone present here welcome to the second day of the faculty development program today's session is based on leveraging ai for data collection and analysis leveraging ai for data collection and analysis has immense potential to improve efficiency boost innovation and complex challenges across various domain as we continue to adopt ai technologies let us do so with a con- commitment to enhancing its potential for the good day good of society now i now i would like to invite today's session chair dr sunil dath purit sir associate dean academics rtu kota uh, today to handle the ongoing session for further proceeding dr sunil dath sir so dr sunil sir thank you very much sham sundar am i audible yes sir yes sir okay uh, so first of all i would like to welcome you all in the second day of uh, faculty development program yes. on ai incorporating uh, in today's research uh, area uh, so uh, today we have uh, as a speaker uh, in our fdp dr parijata majumdar uh, i am very happy to introduce her uh, among you all uh, i have just seen the uh, brief bio data of her and i uh, appreciate uh, her work and uh, uh, the particular uh, area in uh, which uh, she is working uh, dr majumdar is currently working as associate professor at uh, techno college of engineering agartala uh, she had completed her b in computer science and uh, engineering from tit uh, narsinghgarh affiliated under tripura university in 2016 she has also completed her mtech in computer science and engineering uh, with gold medal uh, from tripura university in 2018 she also obtained her phd in computer science and engineering from nit agartala in the domain of iot machine learning and uh, precision agriculture she has completed numerous research papers and uh, patents in reputed international conferences international journals her area of interest includes artificial intelligence Inter- internet of things 5g blockchain precision agric- agriculture cloud computing optimization techniques image processing pattern recognition and many more she has over 6 year of teaching and research experience at various reputed universities in india recently she also collaborated with uh, on the project uh, uh, entitled uh, meta heuristic uh, algorithms for solving real world problems university at uh, mexico as a part of post doctoral research fellow she has also selected uh, for the eargi award 2024 for excellence in research and development uh, in the association with uh, uh, the same meth tech thinking foundation india so uh, she is also uh, speaker expert reviewer editorial board member in many reputed uh, uh, journals of uh, Uh, national and international repute so i welcome her for her address on particularly uh, data analysis and uh, its handling through ai tool so i welcome you dr majumdar ma'am welcome thank you sir for your wonderful introduction sir is my slides visible sir no ma'am no ma'am your slides is not visible yes now it is visible am i audible sir Yes, yes, you are perfectly audible, and uh, slides are also visible. Uh, if possible, you can make it uh, on the full screen. So, good afternoon, everyone. I hope I am audible to you. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Okay, my topic of discussion today is leveraging artificial intelligence for data collection and analysis. Now, let us have a brief introduction on artificial intelligence. Ma'am, you are muted. Hello. am i audible yes yes ma'am yes okay so i am saying that artificial intelligence actually refers to the simulation or approximation of human intelligence in machines and it was developed in 1950 when computer scientist alan turing has released the paper named computing machinery and intelligence it sets the stage Excuse for artificial me, Ma'am, yes. your slides slides are not changing. We are uh, seeing the first slide. Yes, now it is changing. Yes, it is okay now. 
okay the artificial intelligence performs human cognitive function such as interpreting speech playing games and identifying patterns artificial intelligence systems learns how to do so by processing massive amounts of data and looking for patterns to model in their own decision making it has been coined by the scientist john john mc karthi in a conference at dera mouth college and the term has been computed from computing machines and intelligence so what are the different types of ai the artificial intelligence can be divided into strong artificial intelligence and weak artificial intelligence now audiences must be thinking what are the two terminologies that is strong ai and weak ai by strong ai i mean to say that it performs human cognitive function such as interpreting speech playing games and identifying patterns some ai systems are designed to learn without supervision by playing a game over and over until eventually figuring out the rules and how to win essentially so what is weak or narrow artificial intelligence it automates specific tasks typically outperforming humans but operating within constraints the strong artificial intelligence are basically those which humulates sorry which emulates human learning and thinking process though it is a theoretical kind of approach the examples of weak or narrow artificial intelligence either of these two terminologies can be used either of these two terminologies can be used it automates specific tasks typically outperforming but operating within constraints the weak ai examples can be email inbox spam filters language translators website recommendation engines and conversational chatbots now what is basically the risk associated with artificial intelligence the risk associated with artificial intelligence mainly includes that soon it will be displacing all the human beings over the earth yes you heard me right soon it will be displacing or replacing all the human labor on earth the ability of ai to automate processes results in job displacement for human workers or laborers bias and discrimination are also there where ai models may be trained on data that reflects biased human decisions leading to outputs that are biased or discriminatory against certain demographics or population privacy concern is also there where data cannot be where data cannot be displayed or stored without the user content consent or knowledge and may even be accessed by unauthorized individuals in the case of a data breach the ethical concerns mainly include that ai systems may be developed in a manner that is not transparent inclusive or sustainable resulting in a lack of explanation for potentially harmful ai decisions as well as negative impact on users and businesses and environmental costing is also there where large scale ai systems that have been developed can require a substantial amount of memory or energy to operate and process the data which increases carbon emissions and water consumption as well i'm audible right sir yes yes ma'am okay yes yes ma'am yes okay now let's come to the point explainable artificial intelligence now let's come to the point of explainable artificial intelligence it is a set of processes and methods that allows human users to comprehend and trust the result and the output created by machine learning algorithms okay just for an example as you can visualize over here that the shape of the nose of a cat and a dog so it is nothing but a post hoc analysis that helps to verify whether the basis of decision making the shape of nose in this line is how the way human explain the difference between a cat and a dog so whenever we want computer systems to work as expected and produce transparent explanations and reasoning for decisions they make this is how this is how essentially AI tools generate reports and how they model working and tries to explain their working it essentially explains how different features affect the output or what contribution do they have in the outcome of a model 
the features helps to identify the type of a bird okay the next one is what are the different popular frameworks used in the explainable ai system the, the most popular among them is shap the full form is of shap is shapley additive explanations here explaining simple machine learning and deep learning models for image classification and image captioning is done and various natural language processing like sentiment analysis translation and text summarization is also being done the next popular framework used in explainable ai system is elite 5 a python package which helps to debug machine learning classifiers and explains their prediction ele5 do typically support many machine learning frameworks like scikit learn keras xgboost light gradient boosting model and catboost the explanation or the entire ele5 python package you will be getting access from this link and if the audiences require this slide i shall be sharing the slides with the organizer himself or herself so don't you worry about that so what are the two main ways about how classification or a regression model actually works it inspects the model parameters and tries to figure out how the model works globally and the second point is that it inspects an individual prediction made by a model trying to figure out why the model takes the decision it makes the next tool the next tool is what if tool it has been developed by google to understand the working of machine learning trained models we can test the performance in hypothetical situations where we can analyze the importance of different features and visualize model behavior across multiple models and subsets of input data and it also utilizes different machine learning fairness metrics it can be used for different tasks like binary and multi class classification as well as regression the what if tool link has been given over here which you can directly access what the terminologies are associated with this explainable ai framework popularly known as what if tool the next important explainable ai framework is ai explainable 360 it is an open source toolkit that you can use to comprehend how machine learning models predict levels by various means throughout the artificial intelligence application life cycle it is typically developed by ibm research skater is another popular framework which is which enables model interpretation for all forms of model to help one build an interpretable machine learning system it is also an open source python library designed to demystify the learned structure of a black box model both globally and locally so the lime is a tool which is faster in terms of computation all it actually requires is that the classifier implements a function that takes in as an input the raw text or a numpy array and outputs a probability for each class the support for lime is a scikit learn classifier which is basically offered in built in mode it is extensively used in extension in Jupyter Collab it is also used in cloud artificial intelligence platform it helps to draw inference globally on the basis of a complete data set also it helps to locally drawn inference based on individual prediction so xi is nothing but so what is explainable ai it is nothing but an artificial intelligence that is programmed to describe its purpose rational and decision making process in a way that layman can actually understand so what are the challenges and limitations associated with explainable ai despite the advan advances in explainable ai achieving complete explainability without compromising on performance remains a challenge it is especially very complex models like deep neural networks there is also an issue of balancing the technical aspects of explanations with the need for them to be understandable to non experts which requires interdisciplinary approaches combining ai with fields like psychology and education it is quite clear and evident for example if we utilize chat gpt it is only being supported by open ai application and it has recently come into being in the late 2022 or in the early 2023 right 
so how many of us are very much well aware about chat gpt chat gpt is a very recent tool and which is only known to very few of the researchers or academicians or scholars right now in computer science right but outsiders do not know how to actually use or what are the functionalities supported by chat gpt so explainable ai has just come into its core and the and it has been not at all utilized to its full potential chat gpt on the other hand is a generative ai explanation so as we can visualize over here local interpretable model agnostic explanation that is the lime tool is a output a list of explanation reflecting the contribution of each of the feature to the prediction of a data sample as we can visualize in the diagram this image which is shown in green color and if it is red color it for example bull in this case so it explains any black box classifier with two or more classes if the prediction is cat or the prediction is correctly done it will return as positive or green color and if it is red or negative it visualizes some other animal or negative classification or inaccurate classification has been done shown in red color right so this is all about explainable ai so coming back to the previous slide i have been telling and discussing with you all that what actually artificial intelligence of mind actually there are many things associated with ai the main philosophy between artificial intelligence and explainable ai is the theory of mind because it does not actually exists yet but it describes the idea of an ai system that perceives and understands human emotions and uses that information to predict future actions and make decisions on its own it also supports self awareness as it possesses human like consciousness and understands its existence in the world as well as emotional state of others so generative ai is an is the most preliminary type of ai which is supported as i have already reemphasized chatbots gemini cloud and grok these are some of the ai generative tools that utilizes ai to produce written content in a range of formats it supports formats like essays to code and answers very simple and preliminary question in the link computing machinery and intelligence which i will soon hand over to the organizers of this fdp you will be getting the details of all this all this explainable ai tools okay so up to this if the audiences have any question you may ask and if there is no question i shall proceed towards my real time ai applications or case studies that has been designed by me in precision agriculture is there any question audience should i proceed yes ma'am yes please yes please. Okay. okay okay fine as you know that the explainable ai and generative ai differ significantly in underlying principles and applications generative ai actually aims at creating new data or content on the other hand xai aims at making operations of ai systems transparent and understandable to humans generative ai actually takes maximum yeah, advantage the maximum advantage oh, on your line of generative adversarial network oh. operational auto i'm an error sharing say one is follow a question no me ne ba please keep your uh, so much audio yeah, mute sure. hello please I'll keep continue. your audio mute okay so generative ai actually takes maximum advantages of generative adversarial neural networks variational auto encoders and transformers so its main application is in content creation art music and text so this is the main funda why generative ai and explainable artificial intelligence has actually came into being so these are three of my papers which you can visualize over here demand prediction of rice growth stage wise irrigation water requirement and fertilizer using bayesian genetic algorithm it has been published in the sci indexed journal paper paddy and water environment in the year 2023 another paper is prediction of evapotranspiration and soil moisture in different rice growth stages through improved self swarm based feature optimization and ensemble machine learning it has also been published in an sci index journal theoretical and applied climate logic the last but not the least actually these are the three real time ai application based paper 
that have been written by me and this all these three papers have been selected for ERG awards in STEM for excellence in research and development. Okay, so the last but not the least paper is soil moisture simulation of rice using optimized support vector machine for sustainable agriculture applications. It has been published in a special issue SCIE index journal of sustainable computing informatics and systems. So what is the main ideology behind those papers. As we all know that precision agriculture actually involves a lot of lot of IoT based sensors where real time data can be gathered from our climate and soil conditions, right? So rice is one of the principal food grain that consumes plenty of water compared to other crops. Its growth stage can be split into three different stages. I just want to re-emphasize over here, the growth stage of rice actually can be divided into three stages. One is vegetative stage, another is reproductive stage, and another is ripening stage. These growth seasons are very, very overlapping, okay? So rising water scarcity due to unevil rainfall distribution and increasing population have put rice cultivation at a major risk. Precision agriculture actually comes to our rescue where we can enable these practices at a farm level scale and it has gained a lot of traction in recent years among agro-researchers and farmers. It utilizes real-time soil data sensing techniques which are actually used to map, assess and investigate the soil physics. Internet of Things has been utilized by me over here which includes several wireless sensors for real-time sensing of environmental parameters like temperature, humidity, rainfall, etc. So what are the loopholes in the existing research articles? As you can see that previous works have focused on irrigation water requirement prediction. Now what is this irrigation water requirement? This is actually the amount of water that are required by the rice crop in addition to that what it gets from mother nature. Okay, so this irrigation water requirement analysis is a very, very important precision agriculture task, but previous works have focused on irrigation water requirement analysis using different machine learning and artificial intelligence methods, but none have so far focused that evapotranspiration of rice is different in different growth stages. Now, what is this evapotranspiration? Here, as, you, as I have written, ET. ET means evapotranspiration. What is this ET? This evapotranspiration is nothing but loss of water from the surface of rice plant. Okay? And this increases when there is low amount of precipitation or when rainfall is more, precipitation is low. But when precipitation is high, rainfall is also unpredictable in this case. So this irrigation water requirement also varies due to varying evapotranspiration rates in its different growth stage. As I have already discussed, the growth stage of rice can be divided into vegetative, reproductive and ripening growth stages. The surface of water loss from the rice plant actually varies in its different growth stage. Soil moisture is another directly related hydrological component to the evapotranspiration rate of rice. As the evapotranspiration rate varies, the soil moisture also varies in each of the rice growth stages. So my main findings in this paper is that the growth stages of rice can be divided into vegetative, reproductive and ripening stages. Whereas the evapotranspiration rate also varies in these three stages and soil moisture also varies. But none of this information have been taken into account by the previous or existing literature. So this is a new finding and this finding is also supported by a famous scientist called Canberg. So what are my objectives? The objective is to influence, the, to investigate the influence of environmental parameters on irrigation water requirement and to identify the correlated input variables with the evapotranspiration and soil moisture by applying improved self-swarm algorithm. Now, what is a self-swarm algorithm? A self-swarm algorithm is a recently developed meta heuristic whose main strategy is to guide the search process in the search space to find near optimal solution. As you know that in mathematics, there is nothing called best solution. What I said? 
I just want to re-emphasize in mathematics, there is no solution called as best solution. What is exactly possible to find? We can find near optimal solution. And meta heuristic is an optimization algorithm that guides the search process to find a near optimal solution. So self swarm is a similar meta heuristic which actually seeks, generates, or selects a heuristic that provides a sufficiently good solution to an optimization problem, okay? So, to estimate the evapotranspiration and soil moisture based on selected features in different rice growth stages, I have utilized this improved self swarm algorithm. You know, the self swarm algorithm has already been developed, dated back to the year of 2017, by a scientist called Dr. Seed Ali Mujalili in the year 2017, right? So after that, many, many algorithms have been, have been recently published, which are nothing but its improvised version. But a scientist called Olpert et al. has already opined that no particular meta heuristic is good enough to find a near optimal solution. So being motivated by this, Opinion of the scientist Olpert et al. I have also tried to improve the basic self swarm algorithm. And after improvising this self swarm algorithm, I have applied this to feature selection problem, that is the climatic features which have been utilized by me to predict the growth stage wise irrigation water requirement of rice. Why growth stage wise? Because the stage Rice growth stage can be divided into three stages, as I have already discussed, vegetative, reproductive, and ripening stage. And among these three growth stages, the rice requires plenty of water in reproductive stage. I just want to repeat, rice requires a lot of water or irrigation water in its reproductive stage. So what are the essential features or what are the correlated features or environmental parameters in this case that we can be utilizing for predicting the irrigation water requirement? So for this purpose, we have utilized improved self swarm algorithm in this regard. So to estimate the irrigation water requirement based on selected features in different rice growth stage is another objective. Not only this, we have also tried to predict fertilizers utilizing different artificial intelligence approaches based on soil nutrient composition like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It helps to regain soil fertility and ensure rice yield enhancement at the same time. So being driven by this objective, I then started data acquisition. For data acquisition, I have utilized a lot of IoT-based real-time sensors. These sensor data are actually taken from the real-time environmental parameter from NIT Agartala, Jirania. This, there is a rice field in NIT Agartala, Jirania, and data has been acquired from there. And the statistical distribution of those underlying data has been shown here. Okay, as you can visualize over here, that minimum temperature, actually the minimum value ranges from 8.0 and the maximum value ranges to 28.0 and the mean value is therefore 15.79. Likewise, uh, many environmental parameters, I have utilized a lot of sensors for data acquisition purpose, right? So all this data has been collected by real-time sensors, and these sensors are also low cost and effective so that our Indian farmers or agro-researchers can utilize these farmers, uh, can utilize these sensors very much cost effectively. So this is the actual or aggregate cost of the sensors utilized by me in writing these papers the, for gathering the sensor data of minimum and maximum temperature. I have utilized the sensor DHT22 for gathering rainfall information. I have utilized FC37. For gathering soil moisture, I have utilized EC5. For gathering soil minimum and maximum temperature, I have utilized ST01. For measuring wind speed and direction, I have utilized wind speed sensor. And for direction, I have used the anemometer. Okay. And BF5 sensor is used for sunshine hours, for measuring the sunshine hours. BMP180 is used to measure atmospheric pressure. RSPH N01TR1 is used to measure soil pH. 
as you can see that all these sensors are very much cost effective so you can take an idea or take a note that all these sensors being so much easily available can easily be affordable by the indian farmers because most of them are low incoming or are poor right so uh, the, keeping uh, keeping in mind the scenario of the gross domestic product and their low income scenario i have utilized this co cost effective sensors for data acquisition in this papers so this is another frequency of monitored environmental parameters that has been utilized for reference crop evapotranspiration as you can see that most of the scientists and agro researchers have utilized the minimum temperature maximum temperature soil moisture and rainfall information for prediction of reference evapotranspiration and soil moisture from a rice field okay this data has been collected from previous researches that has been published in several internationally renowned sci or extended sci papers okay so the this shows the frequency of occurrence of monitored environmental parameters for reference crop evapotranspiration and soil moisture so now coming back to the feature selection as i have already told that self sort algorithm is a recently developed meta heuristic algorithm which has been developed by dr said ali mirjali in the year 2017 in the diagram figure 10 as you can visualize in the left hand side you can visualize an individual cell okay and this creature actually occurs in the oceans right and in the right hand side you can visualize a self chain which can be found in the deep sea or in the mid of the ocean such as in the pacific ocean okay so as you can see i have pointed out the leader self underlined in red color and the follower self underlined in red color also the follower self actually follows the leader self and this is actually the direction of movement and this is how the scanning of the global search space actually takes place now how they explore and exploit the global search space the self sort algorithm in the self sort algorithm exploration basically refers to the scanning of the entire search space in search of a promising solution right and what is exploitation exploitation is the uh, is searching of the global best or the local best solution in the vicinity of a global best solution that has been found as a result of exploration so basically meta heuristic deals with striking a balance between this exploration rate and exploitation rate so this is obviously a very important phenomena in developing this meta heuristic algorithms or optimization algorithms at hand so these are the different problems of local optima stagnation slow convergence speed slow convergence speed and imbalance exploration and exploitation what is local optima stagnation the solution often get stuck in suboptimal solutions without scanning the entire space throughout the promising solutions are still available in the search space this happens due to lack of exploration now what is this now what is this slow convergence speed the slow convergence speed by slow convergence speed in the search space this essentially means that it happens due to lack of exploration it takes unnecessary processing time while reaching the global optimal solution that has been found in the vicinity of the global best solution found as a result of exploration so again striking a proper balance between exploration and exploitation is very very essential so that's why the famous scientist olpart et al and macready have opined that a particular meta heuristic algorithm is not able to solve all kind of optimization problems and thus new meta heuristic algorithms are continuously budding in nature and they have been continuously improvised in an attempt to improvise the basic self sort algorithm i have also taken an attempt to improvise the leader self position updation equation Th this is a random weight that has been uh, that has been added to the movement of the leader self position this random weight has been taken from the algorithm of particle swarm optimization being inspired from the particle swarm optimization this leader self position updation has been done by random weight that has been taken from pso or particle swarm optimization so these are the problems and this is a solution proposed by me so balancing exploration and exploitation definitely makes sense because the uh, during exploitation we can utilize 
the local search algorithm the local search algorithm can be used and has been used by me to strike a balance between exploration and exploitation right so it essentially avoids the local optima stagnation of the solution now how the slow convergence speed has been improvised the inertia weight has been in introduced which actually acts as a control parameter in the leader self position updation process it actually accelerates the global convergence speed and for local optima stagnation i have utilized opposition based learning which has been applied during the initialization of self swarm algorithm to improvise its population diversity and initial population quality as well so my dear audiences i hope i am audible to all of you so what is local optima stagnation it is nothing but a starting of an unnecessary solution in the search space which takes unnecessary processing time while reaching the global optimal solution so opposition based learning has been utilized by me here during the initialization of the self swarm algorithm to improvise its initial population diversity as well as quality now there must be reason why i have chosen among all the meta heuristics algorithm so far you know that there is grewal optimization algorithm which came into being in the year 2014 the self swarm algorithm which came into being in the year 2017 and now also an algorithm has been developed in the year 2023 called honey badger algorithm i have recently published a paper regarding the honey badger algorithm in the year 2023 where it has resounded success it has it has counting lot of citations my this paper on honey badger algorithm is also counting a lot of citations and success right so why i have chosen this self swarm algorithm the main reason behind choosing this self swarm algorithm is that it preserves the information about the search space over the course of iteration and often utilizes memory to preserve the best solution obtained so far these algorithm have fewer adjustable parameters and have less number of operators it is adjustable user friendly and proficient moreover it has no control parameters for which it can avoid high dependency of the general meta heuristic algorithm on these parameters it has only one parameter to balance between exploration and exploitation my dear audiences this is the main reason why i have chosen this self swarm algorithm for the publication of this paper so the performance of ssa is proven to be effective through standard benchmark as well as ieee 2019 cec functions okay if you go through my publication you will be getting details into it just for the keeping the time constraint in mind i am just keeping the details of this improvised version of ssa as you can visualize it is extensively used for feature selection graph segmentation economic emission scheduling parameter optimization and other co complex optimization domains as well right so here you can visualize the proposed methodology here at first i have acquired the sensor generated data set and after that the data has been pre processed where i have done a certain process of normalization why normalization to bring all the temperature humidity soil ph and moisture data into a certain scale or essentially in the range of 0 or 1 somewhere it takes a fuzzy values in between 0 and 1 after that i have started the propwart 8.0 decision support model where i have checked for data set availability if data is available then i shall go on computing the evapotranspiration which i have explained previously also that it is nothing but the loss of water from the surface of rice plant and if it is not available or the data set is not at all accessible then we will get back to acquisition part again okay and this process will be repeated for all the three growth stages called vegetative reproductive and ripening growth stages after this the data set will be combined and environmental parameters will be selected by my improved self swarm algorithm it has been consolidated with k nearest neighbor for clustering of the data then data will be splitted into 70% of the training data set and test and 30% of the testing data set and also and 10% of data has been kept for data validation purpose by me okay 
So for evapotranspiration and soil moisture modeling, I have utilized Ensemble and standalone machine learning models. Now, why Ensemble? Anyone, anyone among the audiences, can you please uh, state what are the advantages of Ensemble learning models compared to standalone machine learning models? Anyone? Yes, my dear participants, if I am audible, what is why I have preferred Ensemble learning models rather than standalone machine learning models? Okay. Um, I have utilized Ensemble machine learning models because it combines the strength of different weak learners. By weak learners, I essentially mean the individual standalone machine learning models such as support vector regression, classification, and random forest, and decision tree, and so on. And this suffers from low bias and high variance. But for accurate prediction in machine learning, what do we actually need? We actually need high, uh, sorry, low variance and low bias. Now, what is this low variance and low bias? By bias and variance, I mean to say that assumptions about the forms a target function can take should be kept as low as possible. Getting me, audience? So, keeping the bias and variance in check, we can make a little or no amount of assumptions about the form of a target function that a machine learning model actually utilizes. So this is the main reason why we ensemble different standalone machine learning models into a strengthenifying classifier. So after ensembling all these standalone machine learning classifier, I used to model evapotranspiration and soil moisture model. And after that, the daily evapotranspiration and soil moisture values are being taken and measured for all the growth stages of rice. And the model evaluation has been done by different error metrics like mean absolute error, mean square error, Nash Sutcliffe efficiency, root mean square error, and coefficient of determination. I think all of you about heard about this mean absolute error, mean square error, root mean square, and coefficient of determination. But uh, very few of you have heard about NEC. NEC is essentially Nash Sutcliffe efficiency. Those who are agro researchers or are doing their expertise or research work in the fields of precision agriculture, please note down the new terminology called Nash Sutcliffe efficiency. If you go through the current research papers, even in the Nature or Frontiers Journal, you will be seeing this terminology called Nash Sutcliffe efficiency. This is a newly defined performance measurement or evaluation metric in the scenario of precision agriculture. Am I audible, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. For evapotranspiration and soil moisture prediction, I have utilized averaging, max booting, stacking, bagging, boosting, support vector regression, and random forest classifiers. Why I have chosen ensemble learning models? Because it reduces both the variance and bias in prediction performance as I have already told. So these are the some features that are essentially chosen using the improved self swarm algorithm for evapotranspiration prediction. And as you can visualize that negative values indicate negative correlation. What this diagram actually represents, this is a Pearson correlation coefficient diagram, right? So negative values indicate negative correlation and positive values indicate positive correlation, where if the values are closer or is actually one, it means strong positive correlation. And if the value is negative or less than zero or even zero, it identifies weak or no correlation at all. So these are the some of the important or crucial features or relevant features that have been found by Pearson correlation efficiency for efficient evapotranspiration prediction. So likewise, similarly for soil moisture prediction also, I have utilized this Pearson correlation coefficients. So these are some of the results. As you can visualize, for all of the ensemble learning classifiers, this offers much more improved error metrics and the coefficient of correlation that is R2 and Nash Sutcliffe efficiency is even higher for ensemble machine learning models compared to the standalone machine learning models. Also with the selective features at vegetative stage growth stage of rice, it provides better results. Why better results? 
because with selective features there is less chances or low chances of model overfitting problem if say i acquired using real time sensors say 17 data so like uh, temperature moisture minimum temperature soil ph wind direction wind speed etc etc so many parameters are there no but if i take this correlation analysis as i have visualized in this case the correlation analysis helps to eliminate only the uh, helps to eliminate the irrelevant features and keeps only the important features that are very much relevant or highly correlated for evapotranspiration and soil moisture prediction so in all these growth stages as i can show you through this tabular formats that for evapotranspiration prediction and soil moisture prediction this ensemble growth this ensemble machine learning models which actually which actually combines several weak learners or individual machine learning in this case actually performs better than individual stand alone machine learning classifiers right and with the selective features it often it even performs better as you can see a value of nash sakti efficiency of 0.901 which is very much higher in comparison to stand alone support vector regression model where we have achieved nash sakti efficiency of 0.863 only so eventually we can visualize that in the vegetative growth stage of rice it performs very very a uh, resounding success is there using our improved self swarm algorithm with selective features that have been selected by improved self swarm algorithm likewise the all the results for machine learning algorithms at reproductive stage is also shown and also the machine learning and stand alone machine learning classifiers and ensemble classifiers are also shown in reproductive stage as well in all these three growth stages of rice i just want to reemphasize again and again in all the growth stages of rice in the vegetative reproductive and ripening growth stages these ensemble machine learning classifiers with selective features using the improved self swarm algorithm performs very very better in comparison to other classifiers right and so uh, due to these astounding results we can fit this irrigation water requirement values that has been computed using the soil moisture and evapotranspiration real time values to a real time simulation model called crop what 8.0 those who are agro researchers or are, or are very much novice in the field of precision agriculture please note down the term or terminology of crop what 8.0 simulation tool this is a real time simulation tool where data are gathered or simulated in real time and the output are also can be given to layman or poor farmers where they can easily visualize them using a mobile application nowadays all of us are very much uh, popular or familiar with mobile phones right so just uh, so just downloading the mobile application you can you can easily access or visualize the crop what 8.0 simulation tool where you can easily access the soil moisture evapotranspiration and real time irrigation water requirement values using this crop what 8.0 simulation tool so please take a look at this very very important diagram this is another of my sci indexed journal paper where i have revolutionized or improvised a genetic algorithm using the bayesian statistics why bayesian statistics we know that the random forest algorithm is a stand alone machine learning classifier right it has many hyper parameters whose values needs to be adjusted for improving the accuracy of stand alone random forest model the hyper parameters actually includes the minimum number of samples required to be at the leaf node and maximum number of samples to be at the leaf node and maximum number of samples to be at the leaf node okay so these are the important hyper parameters that requires tuning using the genetic algorithm and how the genetic algorithm has been improvised by me as you can visualize the genetic algorithm consists of three main operators selection crossover and mutation right now what the bayesian genetic algorithm funda is here adjustment of hyper parameters as we have already told that it is very much vital to improve accuracy and to avoid flawed predictions right 
So we have utilized Bayesian statistics to enhance the evolution process by actively selecting only the fitter individuals to pass on their genes. Now, how to select which individuals are fitter and which are not fit or which cannot actually get reverberated to the next generation. So for selecting these fitter individuals, we have designed a fitness function, right? The lower the value of the fitness function, the lower is the probability for those individuals to get replaced in the successive generation. And higher the value of the fitness function, higher the probability of those individuals moving towards the next generation. So here, Bayesian statistics is used to enhance the evolution process by actively selecting the fitter individuals to pass on their genes. The information gained in the previous generation is used to generate better offspring. Max pooling is applied to compare the posterior distribution of present and past generation. The information gained in the previous generation determines which individuals requires replacement to speed up the convergence time. Okay, I just want to re-emphasize Max pooling is applied over here to compare the posterior distribution, probability distribution of the present and past generation. The information gained in the previous generation determines which individual requires replacement to speed up the convergence. That is, irrespective of measuring the fitness value manually or in hand, we can usually compare the posterior distribution of the present and the previous generation. And the information gained from the previous generation can help us to determine which individual requires replacement to actually speed up the convergence time. So this will definitely help us avoid the local optimal solution where the solution gets stuck in a suboptimal solution without scanning the entire search space. Though promising solutions are still available in the search space. And slow convergence is also avoided because unnecessary processing time and fitness function calculation in hand is also reduced to a considerable extent while reaching the global optimal solution in this case. And imbalanced exploration as well as exploitation is also balanced by effectively scanning the search space and the search is confined in the vicinity or in the local neighborhood of the global best solution of the search space, which has been obtained as a result of exploration. So balancing is definitely achieved in case of exploration and exploitation in Bayesian genetic algorithm. So this is another result or Taylor diagram plots for soil moisture prediction for performance comparison at vegetative, reproductive and ripening stage. Okay. So this actually visualizes the observed values and the comparison with other ensemble machine learning and standalone machine learning classifiers. Here we can easily visualize that the observed irrigation water requirement values are actually close to the bagging and improved self swarm values rather than other standalone classifiers. And the same also holds true for rest of the growth stages of rice, which are called reproductive and ripening growth stages. Okay, so the Taylor diagram essentially is a 3D plot which helps to visualize the relation between the correlation coefficient and standard deviation of the actual values. And as we can see that the observed irrigation water recommend values are very much closely acquainted or very much closely related to whatever values we have gained using the improved self sum algorithm and the ensemble classifiers. So this, this is also another proof why our algorithm is better compared to existing methods. So this is another 3D plot which actually shows the relation between precipitation, evapotranspiration and irrigation water requirement. We can easily visualize from this 3D plot that the relation between precipitation and evapotranspiration is how. How the relation is? You can see that if the precipitation or the rainfall in the form of cloud or snow or any types of falling of water in the earth surface is termed as precipitation, right? The precipitation, if increases, the evapotranspiration rate, which is nothing but the surface of water loss from the rice crop goes low. That means precipitation and evapotranspiration are directly related. Whereas the evapotranspiration and irrigation water requirement are inversely related. Why? 
because if the water loss from the surface of the rice crop increases the irrigation water requirement will definitely increase isn't it yes the if the loss of water from the surface of rice crop is more then irrigation water requirement is more obviously so uh, this irrigation water requirement is actually maximum at the reproductive growth stage of rice those who will be working in precision agriculture scenario using artificial intelligence and explainable ai tools like chatbots chat gpt drock and then crop war simulation 8.0 they can easily confine to this 3d plot that what is the actual relation between precipitation evapotranspiration and irrigation water requirement so this is another mathematical details how i have modeled the crop water requirement the crop water requirement is nothing but the multiplication of the crop coefficient at respective rice growth stages and the it, it has been multiplied with evapotranspiration to get to get what the actual requirement of the crop water is in vegetative reproductive and ripening stage and as you can see that the crop coefficient value also differs as per growth stages of rice it values ranges from 1.15 to 1.123 it values ranges from 1.12 to 1.15 and from 1.00 to 1.04 during the reproductive and ripening stage as well thus the previous works have also not noted this crucial fact that crop coefficient also varies as per growth stage so this essentially signifies that evapotranspiration rate irrigation water requirement also varies according to the growth stage of different cash crops like rice wheat cotton etc okay so effective precipitation can be calculated by this following to uh, following to formulas uh i am not getting into the mathematical detail for the sake of time being so the computed evapotranspiration values actually lies from 4.4 to 8.0 mm for vegetative stage less than 10 mm on an average at reproductive stage and greater than 10 mm on an average at ripening growth stage so this is how the the irrigation water requirement has been modeled for using the crop coefficient and evapotranspiration so this is the predictive performance results of irrigation water requirement using machine learning models at vegetative reproductive and ripening stages here also our model bayesian genetic algorithm has witnessed resounding success compared to other models like particle swarm optimization back propagation ada boost KNN decision tree, of course, all the standard and machine learning classifiers. Okay, so Bayesian genetic algorithm, which is used to optimize the parameters of random forest, is seeing or witnessing resounding success in all these three stages of rice growth stage, vegetative, reproductive, and ripening growth stages for irrigation water requirement prediction. So this is all about my uh, work that has been published in the recent articles, and now also uh, I am working on a real time meta heuristic analysis as uh, as uh, re as respected professor has already introduced in my work. I am collaborating on a project called uh, meta heuristic algorithms for solving real time optimization problems. with a foreign professor from mexico university of guadalajara his name is professor dr diego oliver nevaro he is among the top 1% scientist of the world yes see we are me right he, he is from top 1% scientist of the world i am collaborating with him and my postdoc has been recently com completed with a remuneration of us 2500 dollar and i have completed my postdoc for the duration of 3 uh, months from the university of guadalajara while staying in this foreign university and i am hoping and uh, expecting that uh, i am doing more and more solving this real time optimization problems using this meta heuristic algorithms now there is an important question my dear audiences why i have uh, exclaimed that feature selection is an optimization problem what is the objective of feature selection anyone the objective of feature selection is that it has two fold objective right one is maximum classifying accuracy and another objective is to reduce the number of irrelevant features or to select only the correlated features right so these are the two uh, two objectives which are to be addressed by the meta heuristics algorithm so this is essentially an optimization algorithm because we have to address all these two objectives or this multifold objectives at a time or simultaneously 
if we maximize the classification accuracy and the number of features also gets increased then it will not be a good fit for machine learning algorithms because they will essentially suffer from overfitting problem right so we have to we have to take care that even the classification accuracy reaches its peak the number of features should be kept at check right otherwise we won't be able to use this machine learning models and we have to skip to some some tough deep learning models but deep learning models also after an extent cannot handle a large number of attributes it is more it is nothing but a subset of machine learning algorithms which actually involves a lot of lot of training and testing data but uh, if we increase if, if we go and increase this uh, attribute list then deep learning algorithms will also exactly fail so thus feature selection is essential an optimization problem because it has to satisfy multifold or twofold objectives that is maximizing maximizing the classification accuracy whereas keeping the features or the amount of features at check right so so satisfying this to multi, multiple objective is should be kept in mind while developing a feature selection problem okay so this is all about my today's presentation and if any one of you have any question please feel free to ask me so any question from audiences is very much welcome uh, thank you thank you very much for your patience hearing thank you very much ma'am uh, anyone anyone participant want to ask any question to ma'am okay so uh, on behalf of the all the committee members of this ftp i extend a warm vote of thanks to our speaker dr majumdar for enlightening and uh, thought provoking talk on leveraging ai for data collection and analysis we are incredibly fortunate to have had the opportunity to listen you ma'am uh, your comprehensive talk on the way in which artificial intelligent is transforming from collecting and analysis has surely increased our collective awareness of the huge opportunity that ai offers in this area uh, we also extend our heartfelt gratitude to you ma'am for uh, uh, generally sharing your time knowledge experience with us your presentation was not only informative but also engaging uh, captivating and audience atten attention from start to finish once again we are thankful to you ma'am and i am also thankful to each and every participant who is attending this fdp online with us thank you thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you for such warm warm welcome and warm vote of thanks sir thank you sir welcome well over to you shamsundar yes sir the certificate i request technical team to present uh, uh, madam certificate thank you sir the coordinators of this uh, fdp have worked day and night with full enthusiasm to make this fdp a successful one and i am very much thankful to the advisory committee members professor dr meher chand for giving me this opportunity to talk and share my views and experience with all these lovely audiences over here thank you very much sir thank you for your patience hearing ma'am please accept this uh, uh, certificate of appreciation from our side welcome ma'am welcome sir i wish and pray and hope that we will be soon meeting you again in some fdp platform or some webinars like this and we shall be extending our collaboration in future also uh, using this uh, techno college of engineering agartala platform as well as your institute we shall be collaborating again and again in some other future commitments also thank sure, you sir sure, thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you thank you so much joining today fdp program okay shyam sundar inform technical team to leave the meeting